thank you. We'll call the order. The meeting of the Northampton Public Shade Tree Commission. The chair is away. I believe at a wedding, so I will be chairing in her stead. It's June 1st, and we're going to start with public comment. We have two guests. Oh, sure. Okay. Um, my name is Ann Deggendorf. Um, I live at 88 Round Hill Road. Um, and it's a um, single family home that had been converted, has been converted into four uh, condominiums by construct. Uh, we've tried to preserve trees, and the commission was good enough to plant a beautiful ginkgo, which is doing very well. So I'd like to, first of all, thank the commission for doing that. And we're slated to get another one. So, in light of that concern for trees and the city of trees, uh, we've been facing a um, new development by the historic Round Hill Summit. And uh, the reason why I'm here today is uh, the condition of all the trees on the property. I did a walking tour of uh, just the Round Hill Road uh, on the sidewalk and took pictures, various pictures, of all the uh, trees that look very de detrimental. And I know this is on probably all of them are on private property, however, there are some limbs that are so large and overhanging on the sidewalk that I think it is a danger. Um, however, uh, <clears throat> we also are concerned with the new parking lot that's going in, which will take down some very, very large trees. And um, we've had meetings with the Historic Commission. Uh, we met with the Planning Board uh, last week, and they, um, uh, the Historic LLC wants to amend their uh, site plans for uh, demolition of the gymnasium, natatorium, and put up a parking lot. And this will involve taking more trees down, and uh, we're very concerned with other issues that are not, con not concerned with trees at the moment. Uh, so uh, we've written letters uh, to the developer um, we will meet again, possibly on June 9th is the next uh, planning board meeting to approve the plan. So uh, my request is possibly, since this is a tree commission in the city of trees, that possibly someone who is an arborist, which I'm not, uh, would come to the planning board to uh, make a public comment about trees and uh, the condition of the trees. Uh, Clark School did sell the property and some of the trees started to, de to deteriorate back then in, I'd say, 2012. Yeah. Even maybe yeah. a little before that. Uh, and then when it was sold, uh, the property was not even uh, being mowed. And there were many branches that were falling. And now we are faced with the trees. You can see all the tops of the trees are dying from the top down. So. Um, I think that's my statement. If you wanted to add anything else, Jim. Yeah, sure. Thanks. And, uh, thanks for your kind of interview. Um, and I'm just. Uh, my name is Jim Winston. Um, I, I grew up here in, in Northampton, Crescent Street, actually, and uh, I gave Jay a um, copy of the letter. Um, this is actually not a letter that I wrote to the planning board. I'm. Um, my wife and I own 234 Crescent. I grew up at 280 Crescent, and, and so. Um, James McDonald, who owns um, 230 Crescent, wrote, and I kind of, uh, th there's a couple issues he hits, but I really can't say it any more uh, succinctly than, than he did. Maybe you two could share that, sure. and, and, and you two could share this one. Thank you. Um, we're, we're, we are deeply concerned about the issue with uh, the trees. It seems that um, under this new group, uh, trees that, uh, well, first of all, they're not being maintained. Uh, there's trees that are dead. Uh, that we can see right behind uh, 234, 230, 250 Crescent, the Wilsons at 240 Crescent um, that need attention. And then unfortunately to their proposal, which includes um, uh, and some issues that your, your commission is concerned with, um, but they want to, where the boiler house is, they want to make that a um, uh, three unit apartment house and they wanted to put eight parking spaces at the top of the hill which would necessitate under their plans some removal of trees. We just don't think that there's been any thought in terms of uh, a proper tree survey and that's what James McDonald request that before they're allowed to move forward uh, and I think that's part of highlighted that uh, a proper tree survey be done 
uh, in an inventory, so to speak, and see um, not only what trees need to be addressed, but um, more importantly, the ramifications. And the other issue that kind of goes along with it is the groundwater problem. Uh, for anyone that really knows that part of Northampton, that part of Crescent Street, those houses have always been susceptible to run, uh, groundwater, running water from, from Clark School all the way down. And those houses have all had water in their basements. And we're worried that once uh, they start working, I don't think they've done a proper soil hydrology study that would really um, speak to um, what would happen if they started uprooting these trees uh, that are healthy. And um, we're just asking, and, and I fully endorse Ann's request that somebody um, from this commission, if possible, right now the planning board uh, is scheduled to have the proponents of this project back on June 9th. I say scheduled to because last Thursday we went to 1115 at night, did not get uh, meet that part completed, and they gave the proponents to June 9th uh, to look into some, some concerns that were raised. And there is some question, I think, whether they'll actually be um, ready to go forward tonight. But I guess Carolyn Leach, um, who's in charge of that planning, um, might need to have that part continue. But as it's currently scheduled, it is on for June 9th. And uh, whether it's June 9th or their following meeting June 23rd, whenever that is, it would be great if there was some uh, representation regarding that and endorsement of the tree survey. Thank you. Thanks. Jamie and Ann, just a couple points. Uh, so uh, our board really only deals with public uh, shade trees at this mm -hmm. time. Um, but by way of information, and I don't know if the ordinance uh, pertains to this project or if this project is grandfathered, but the city council passed the significant tree protection ordinance, which would call for a uh, full inventory of the trees and, and the protection of most of those uh, trees. So that's something to at least ask the planning board uh, about when you uh, meet with them on the, on the night. Right, it's called the, the, the significant tree protection ordinance, I believe. Yeah, they're, they're not grandfathered. Okay. They, they, they have to adhere to this ordinance. I okay. talked to Carolyn today. There has been a tree inventory done, but I have not seen it on the tree board, by the way. Oh, hi. I met you last fall. Yes, 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 so. nice to meet you. There has been a tree inventory done uh, that I'm aware of that I have not seen it. But there has been an inventory done. The trees that are identified to be removed have been identified for caliper inch. Carolyn indicated to me off the top of her head it's like 250 caliper inches of tree removal that has to be taken down to accommodate their site plan. But they have to abide by this ordinance, which is basically pretty close to a one-for-one -one replacement. So and were we successful in that ordinance in inserting language that had that inventory go through the tree warden's eyes? Mm -hmm. Good question. No. Well, regardless, it, yeah. it's something that, you know, this commission is very much aware of uh, and has prioritized for the next year or so to integrate the tree ward into a bit more of the review process for various permits um, so that you know we're at least aware of these types of issues and can uh, speak to them as appropriate. So. Do we have a date when that tree inventory was done? No, I do not have a date. Okay. Thank you. So yeah, thank you very much. Um, I just have one quick thing. I mean, just as for ammunition, um, there are these um, tree calculation tools online. Davy Tree has one, and um, what, what is it? iTree? iTree. So, what you can do basically is just go up to a tree, uh, hopefully uh, identify what it is, and then four and a half feet from the base of it to the, up the trunk, you measure it. And then you can, it'll put out how, you know, you plug that information in and it will give you information on how much carbon that tree sequesters, oh, okay. how much rainwater it, you know, ameliorates, how much pollution, uh, how much oxygen it produces. So um, it could be for people who are less aware of uh, the benefits of trees, okay. it can be kind of, you know, they'll give you little graphs and all kinds of stuff that you could say, oh, did you know, by the way, this maple, you know, produces this much oxygen, and this, you know. By size. 
Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And it's based on the how big the tree, how big the how what the diameter of the trunk is mm -hmm. at four and a half feet off the ground. It's called diameter and breast height DBH. DBH. Yeah. We also have, um, in terms of water, that the trees might use. Because that's one of the things I think is a benefit. If you've got a problem with water, if the trees are, are using that as nutrient, nutrients, uh, would that calculate that as well? Uh, so it calculates how much storm water the tree. So it calculates the heating and cooling effect that the tree has. Mm -hmm. It calculates uh, carbon sequester over its lifetime. So basically, if you take it, so I, I did this for a tree on uh, the street off Jackson Street. It was Gleason. It's folks want to know if it was a public shade tree or a private tree, trying to be a private tree. They want to remove it because they want to install solar panels. So I took a few extra minutes and actually did the eye tree benefits calculator and uh, printed it out and sent it to them to show them presently to date what the tree has saved, uh, how much storm water absorbs, or how much carbon it's sequestered. Uh, and project the tree to live like another 30 or 40 years, how, how, what the tree would actually do going forward. It was pretty amazing. And I actually think the folks who, who received it uh, appreciated that and they decided they are going to cut the tree down, but they're going to plant other trees on their property to mitigate for the loss of their private tree. So I don't have any jurisdiction over that tree, whether it's just more of an informative piece for them mm -hmm. to understand by cutting the tree down, you're taking one renewable light source and creating another one that's really only renewable in one way, you know, through the sun, so. Okay, yes, that's very helpful, thank you. The i tree benefit calculator is probably the most detailed version to use. It's integrated with Google Maps, so you can actually look at the property. You can actually outline the property of the house, you can square footage, you can tell them how much heating, heating uh, they're gonna, uh, uh, heating and cooling monies they're gonna save over the lifetime. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, I'll be quick. Just catch up. Um, chair report. Uh, for we're going to have a full summer schedule. Uh, they'll uh, meetings will occur uh, all throughout the summer except for August third. So give yourselves that day off. Um, the D new DPW director has been invited and has accepted uh, to meet with us on July sixth. Um, and uh, just an FYI, on uh, June 2nd at 7.30, it's tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, at the uh, UU Society, it will be a community forum on gas leaks. Um, and I'm not sure how much of the, the gas leaks, uh, you know, killing the trees is going to be on there, but uh, that, that'll be tomorrow at 7.30. And then just the update, uh, InSpirit Crystals has uh, sponsored the, um, the uh, tree statue uh, by Robert Markey again. So uh, once that has uh, run its course for the month or so, uh, we'll have another uh, shade tree downtown go up in front of uh, InSpirit Crystals. And that is all I have as the chair. So I turn it over to the tree ward. Okay. Do we have no minutes, by the way? No. No, Terry was on vacation and it was very crazy for two weeks, so we get both sets of minutes at the mall. Right. Um, so the bike pit, the bike pit meeting was held at the uh, First Churches uh, on the 18th. Um, it was, I would say, fairly well attended, not as much. Um, basically, similar to the to the first uh, session that was held at the senior center, where they basically eventually you know, they took all the information they gathered from folks uh, in that meeting, they digested it, um, took some of the site plans that they originally had changed, and based on the recommendations, again broke down even smaller, again to small groups, uh, basically did the same thing, uh, went over what. Uh, I mean, it really wasn't much, you know, anything new. I mean, they talk about the fact that uh, we, uh, Jay, Rob, and myself, really met with uh, Phil Goff from Alta. Uh, I did see a difference in their presentation as to how many street trees and how uh, important that was. Nice. That was really kind of a big thing. Uh, 
the other big question I got, of course, was the other half that where is snow removal on Main Street? You know, we can go so that, you know, that's always, because they're playing with the idea of actually putting an island in the middle of Main Street. Huh. Um, so there is going to be on uh, June 18th, there's going to be a uh, day long um, restriction of uh, traveling from Center Street to Cracker Barrel Alley. What they're going to end up doing is they're going to pull out the parking spaces. Pull out the curbing to the end of those parking spaces by using cones and barrels. Uh, inside the existing parking spaces is going to be a bike lane and it's going to reduce traffic to probably one lane. Uh, it's kind of it's going to be an experiment for people to kind of see. They're also going to do a, uh, they're going to occupy the two spaces in front of City Hall here with actually cones and barrels but also actually new plant material with planters in there, basically uh, tables and chairs. So sort of like a little pocket park. So they're kind of trying to throw these thoughts out there that people have actually asked for and actually make them happen temporarily in Main Street to actually see what it would look like, kind of give them a feel of what Main Street would look like redesigned. So it was a it was an interesting meeting. Um, I'm not sure, I don't think that I was there was another meeting scheduled. I'm trying to look that up. But if I find that So I think I think it was I think it was fairly interesting. I was happy to see that they were really got on board with uh, trees in there and the whole of both landscape plan. So. And I think for the 18th, there were uh, they got some trees donated in yes. like five gallon buckets, so yes. they were going to put some out. Yep. So they're going to create a, you know they're going to create a uh, a small snapshot of what Main Street may look like. And we also found out the reason why there's no trees in front of this building. Uh, I didn't hear that. No, <laughs> Believe it or not, it's because the, the, the building's historic and people, someone wants to see it. <laughs> <laughs> you mean, it's it's a historical reason. You look at a lot yeah, of those yeah, photos, it's a there, are no, vista. there are no uh, photos, there are no trees in front of City Hall, ever. Um, so the other item of so just to give you up to speed on the RFP for the tree inventory. Anybody have any questions about the bike bed? I hope I explained that well enough. But it was a, that was like a 12-hour day, so it was kind of it was kind of a long day. So the uh, RFP. So I kind of changed things around a little bit in the RFP. I'll, sh I'll just hand it out in a second, but I just wanted to talk briefly about the contract with DCR. So the, the contract for the $30,000 with DCR has made the rounds inside of City Hall. It's been signed by the mayor, and it's, uh, it's, it should actually be in Boston to be signed by the state. So we will have a valid contract till June 30th of 2016, when we'll have to renew the contract for the new fiscal year for uh, to Friday, December 1st. So we have secured the $30,000. Um, I met with um, Andy Hillman, who works for Davy, Davy Industry, Davy Tree, who was the former tree warden of the city of Ithaca, uh, who is very knowledgeable about uh, bare root planting, and very just knowledgeable in general. It's very interesting. So he's actually worked, he worked with me, I sent this to him, and he kind of reworked it a little bit and sent it back to me based upon his uh, knowledge. I'll just pass these around. Jay, like. How'd you get in touch with him? How'd you connect? Molly Farley, Wow. Molly Farley put us in contact with each other. Huh. That's awesome. And uh, you want to come? Okay. So, thanks Thanks for having Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. So this is version five that I'm working on, um, and uh, the only so the only couple of changes that I made are on page from the last time we met, or on page I guess it would be on page four. 
where it says tabular form data collected for each tree ID. based on 
there's standards that are set for their utility wires depending on what the voltage is. Right. It's three phase, single phase. And inadvertently they help out the phone company and the cable company because they don't do it. But I think we should know what we're up against because if there's, you know, a Comcast cable that's 20 feet off the ground, and I don't think we should plant a tree that's going to get 50 feet tall, even if the poles are 55 to 60 feet tall, because it's just going to end up interfering at some point in time, one way or another. Um, and it's just going to be, it's just the cause of interference is not necessary. We should actually plant. Well, and excluding the little utility lines downtown for the for the street lights, sure. you know, once, you know, if there's a lower line, there's going to be an upper line, right? right? I mean, and that, what? 10 feet is not going to make or break what no. tree goes and in. The, the light, the utilities that are downtown, those are eventually going to get buried. Those will be buried. So those really, the note, we don't, we own that, we own the, the lights in the center of town. So the National Grid doesn't do any uh, utility for You're about to own all the lights. Hmm? You're about to own all the yeah, lights. Yeah, I know we are. Yeah. <laughs> Something else. Something else. Another is the 4 by 4 feet. Um, a lot of the tree belts are actually. Not that shape, you know, four feet wide. No, wide. so would they, if it were three feet by a long strip, would it still get included? Pro probably not the way that I have it written. Right, and that would be a possible problem. Uh, yeah, I'll disagree with that, but I'm also concerned that we're going to be. Yeah, it's kind of where I'd want to play anything three feet less, less than four feet. Well, you know what? What would be actually kind of helpful is for them to. I mean, they, they could they could identify it, and we could then use that to show how many missed opportunities there were by four foot, a foot and a half. In other words, they say here's a whole bunch of three foot wide sections where, where you know it would be great to have trees, but you know they're three feet. We yeah. could use that to say you know this is a this is a fault in the design process going forward we need to find another foot somewhere all over Northampton there are three foot yeah. three three and a half foot um, tree belts that are populated with trees and it's, that's that's the sort of standard in Northampton. So I, so I, I can change it to make it three by they can identify a thousand sites that are three by three at a minimum and then they'll capture whatever else above that but the problem is, is that it for a thousand that they're 200 feet that weren't suitable because they're too small. There are almost no three or three, I mean, almost all the sites are three feet by a strip. So they're, with, with the four by four is downtown where they've actually made cutouts. So those small, there are a few places where there are small cutouts that get picked up, it would be unfortunate. See, I envision a little differently. I don't look at it as being just a four by four cutout. So for example, the strip that's in front of the antique dealer on like Bridge Street. Mm -hmm. There's yes. there's a whole planting strip right there. So you could have multiple right. four by four tree plantings in that strip. Right. It's just a matter of how you ask the vendor to identify them. You know, I, I think it would be okay. I mean we we can it doesn't stop us from planting trees. They didn't identify. I guess. No, it, it doesn't. It's just giving us a. It's just giving us a tool that we have to actually make our lives a little easier. When we actually run out of all the great places that we know to plant trees on our own, we'll have this tool that will say, "Well, we have X, Y, and Z locations for." We're allowed to apply the tree size based upon its maximum growth, whether it's uh, small, medium, or large. It is actually more ammunition too to, uh, you know, to use structural soil in the design. You know, if there isn't room, you know, let's say you do have a three-foot strip and then you have a sidewalk and then a, you know, a piece of grass. You don't have to do the entire sidewalk. You know, you can do two, two pieces of the sidewalk, you know, two you know, four-foot sections of sidewalk, and then the tree can have access. To yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. You can incorporate it into the, like they're doing the whole main street, mm -hmm. and then you can incorporate it into a plan. You don't have to use the whole 
thing. Mm -hmm. So we could go, there has to be four feet wide or a total of some square feet. In other words, four by four, or, or, or anything up down Doesn't the street. Doesn't us from planning. You can say, or, or if, or if a critical location exists that doesn't meet those criteria, please identify it and label it as such. But if it's could you could could you you? I mean, it's not ideal to plant trees in three foot wide. Strips, you know what I mean? I mean, we're doing it because that's what we yeah, want. I mean, no, but if there's but a three-foot strip and there's wires small, overhead, yeah. right, so put some cherries down. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, that's been sort of the design. Right. 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 So that's right. Right. laid out. Just right. Laid it out. That's how they laid it right. out. So, right. So if, if you just said that it could be a, a minimum of three by six, you know, four by four or three by six, you know, I'm not thinking of it right. So you come to at least the three by six. Five and four. That's actually bigger than four by four. Just a rectangle. So a minimum of three by five. Minimum mm -hmm. what? Three by five? Yeah, whatever. Three by five is a nice size. Minimum of three by five or four by four. Uh, you can have either. You know. Imagine they can have a drop down menu. Size of planting, say three three foot. <coughs> I'm sure that it would be easy for them to manipulate that. So, so they tell us what it was for. You know, yeah. The three by here's the three by five. I think Rich's point is he wants to get best sites first. Mm -hmm. Right. So if we spend the money on getting the better sites selected first, mm -hmm. we can always go back to the other sites. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the other thing too is that I'm, I'm anticipating that we're going to come in a little wall. You mean not that many sites? No, I think the whole grant itself, I think the tree that's right probably won't cost more than the grant. Oh, really? Oh, that'd be great. Well, Andy quoted me oh, at uh, eight dollars, eight dollars a tree, a tree, because our it's not complicated in the sense we're not asking for photos. Photos rise up the price mm -hmm. tremendously. Depending on what kind of photos you'd like to have. Uh -huh. I have just one photo of the tree, a set back snapshot, uh, a photo of the you know of the crown, a photo of the um, you know, oh. leaders, wow. a photo of the you know the roof flares. And some people really go wow. all out. The photos really create a lot of heartache as well, and using them in, in uh, GIS. So tree keeper, that's the name of the that's what uh, if you had experience with that tree keeper. That's what Davy Tree uses for its tree management system. I'm not familiar with the system, but when we worked in Worcester with Davy, they were doing a lot of our inventory. They were very good and very effective. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I think I can, I can change that sizing around and actually run it by hand. I'm going to make a few more changes to this. I'm going to send it to electronic and see what happens before the next meeting because I'd like to actually get it put out sooner or later. And if no one has any comments or anything else, then I will actually have it in. I have to run it by Joe Cook first. But uh, based on the other treatments right there, so, um, the city of Concord did a treatment, but it's very cool. It actually did a whole historical, yeah, a whole historical narrative talked about the history of the trees and you know um, how old they've been around since Paul Revere was around and planted what huh? and that's why he was here he went out to, to their actual uh, pre-bid conference and he actually stopped to see me back. so it was very it was very nice and I shared some information about this not about the inventory but about the actual variable plantings and he I explained to him our situation about um, how we can fill that from higher gel and I explained to him how they came through and he said they said they should have been a little different. He said they should have had a lot more hydrogel. They should have bare of trees. They should uh, he said it sounds like they just took them, they dipped them and shipped those. He said when I used to do it for the city of Ithaca, he said I would actually go there and dip them myself, put them in the bags and actually bring them to 
So we, we had this conversation about yeah. that just today. Yeah. Just yeah. 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 So yeah. What's yeah. happening is that they are hiring, the nurses are hiring, uh, you know, cheap labor, uh, and they're not getting the hydrogel mixture correct, mm -hmm. so they're dipping them. There's only a very small amount of hydrogel, which I think we discovered. Uh, there was, it was just some crystals. It was very little. So Andy suggested that uh, any thoughts that we have, we can actually uh, get some thoughts from all of you that worked on this and actually put it in an email and send it to them. And if no, that the entries don't make it, they'll warranty them. So Andy said they like feedback. Mm -hmm. We want to hear feedback. So yeah, Jen had the idea that if they warranty them, then we'll be picking up more trees. The idea that somebody would lose by trees and pick them up. Because the possibility, you really suggest that we should, we should not do it in the spring. Oh, okay. Really, yeah, he suggests we should do it in the fall. He said it's really it's your window of opportunity, yeah. and it's totally different. He said the weather's going in reverse, it's cooling off. Said, oh, so they dig them the after the, after yeah. they yeah. drop their leaves. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. He said that the, you know, the pressure on the tree yep. to perform is totally different. Yep, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Because if it's pushing buds, right. it's using the carbohydrates. Said, the weather in the spring is, you know, it, it's kind of difficult. It's hot one day. And you've got to dry one, too. I mean, yes. Plant the tree, you know, the last two weeks, you better yeah. have a hose on that thing. We've been watering them twice a day. Whoever has been watering them, I haven't really gotten a lot of, uh, I haven't got a lot of emails from folks about watering the trees we planted. Mm -hmm. We've the door hanging, but that's, that's okay. So that's so that's kind of it. I don't know if has any other questions on the inventory, but that's kind of where I'm at. Can we go back over on sure. the underwire? Yes. Yeah. So would the ideal to be to plant I mean, this is all new to me, because I, I understood that we were able to plant trees that would as long as they didn't reach the upper wire. And if we're trying not to reach the lower wire, there are places where they string the lower wire really well. I mean, you know, really, really well. Well the utility's looking for ten foot clearance. So it depends on how it is on the pole. Right, so 10 feet below the upper wire. Ten, 10 feet below the primary yeah, wires, right. depending upon what the voltage is. Right. The voltage increase, the uh, trimming. Right. So, the, wires. so the issue would be a problem if the communication wires are even more than 10 feet below the They're more than 10 feet below the I don't think they would come around right. the wire. Right, right. So, so it's really the, the height of the upper wire that makes the difference. So that's why I'm a little confused on why we're, how we're doing this. You well, mean for sighting? I don't think there's many that exceed. The majority are probably within the ten feet of the primary. Yeah. I don't think I don't think the much, I don't think there's too many where the lowest down. is well out of that ten foot range. Right. But I mean, would it? It, is it easier for them to measure the lower wires that we're asking to measure? No, it's actually just so we actually know what the lowest obstacle is. So we can determine what kind of trees we're going to plant there. I mean, that's really what it amounts to. I mean, if we're going to plant, you know, I think we have to consciously put the right tree in the right place. Right. Of course. It'll still be a field decision, I think. Yeah. yeah. And I think what we've, what's driven us in the past is that this is the stock that we have available. These are the locations that we have. And some of the places we're definitely we recognize we're taking chances on planting, you know, these trees that will be 50 or 60 feet tall and our utility wires are on. Well, not, I mean, it's not been my experience. Well, it, but for example, on Prospect Street, you know, we planted a couple of uh, American hot horn beams that are going to get pretty tall. So we planted them right, we set them back from uh, a very tall 50 or 60 foot tall uh, that had, um, you know, uh, three phase wires mm -hmm. on them. So, that will be a tree that will get trimmed quite some time. I guess my goal is just to see what we have. So you take, the, it's categorized, you have the best plan locations. There's no utilities, so four by four. Mm -hmm. We know we have 250 of those sites. We're going to go plant them. These sites, we have locations that are four by four, but we have utility wires underneath them, and they are 25 feet. We have this location that has utility wires of some sort that are 30 feet. You know, uh, 20 feet. So you can categorize them by the height of the lowest wire so you can figure out what the best plant material is to put underneath each tree. The locations, for example, that have utility wires that are very low, 
those would be ones that I would pick out of my head and say, okay, we got to go figure out some setback plans. Because now we're going to be out of, now we know we can't plant, even though we got a great tree belt in the corners, which is close to the ground. We want to have maximum shade. The best thing to do is probably try to get some setback plans. So there's a couple different ways you can look at it. And that's kind of where I was, that was my motive for thought. We're still, no matter what, we're going to have to go and look. Yeah, and that's, that was Rob's first comment in the very beginning. He said, regardless of what they give you, you're still going to have to go look, right? So, you know, it's an average. It's but it can narrow it way down. <coughs> you yes. Can, you know, yeah. drive around on your own to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. I'm just a little, a little concerned because if the underwater trees are really going to be that short, they're really going to be. I'm just feeling you're the crab apple trees can go under most any wire. Yep. Um, but they will grow up into the new wire. So, yeah, that's where I'm going to let Rob this, all right? So, uh, volunteers and myself have been able to plant uh, most of the maples, which are in bags, most of the uh, scarlet oaks, which have been almost all the scarlet oaks that are small being made. In other words, they're, they're not great big being so not too hard to handle. Um, and we're waiting to work with the DPW to plant the plant beans. Locusts, because those are larger and a little harder than the So it, it could be handled by volunteers, but what we do. Um, so I go on about the, just that we're, we're going to try and contact the Amherst Nursery. We are in touch with the Amherst Nursery about getting treated for the fall. Um, uh, the, I, I went to Amherst Nursery and, I'm sorry, I went, oh, I went to Amherst Nursery about two weeks ago to look to see what the fall might look like. And they've sold an awful lot of their trees. The slowdown that we're kind of hoping for someday, where other people ahead of us aren't buying them. The uh, PCR is a lot of huge amount of trees from that. Holy up, still buying them. So there's kind of a, a lack of trees. So we may not even be able to get the trees to be. But there should be a lot of trees in the 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 way of planting them has kind of shifted from those big volunteer days. Uh, it took a lot of support from DPW that wasn't necessarily um, a good use of their time. And uh, it was kind of stressful because we had to make sure that things really went smoothly way in advance of planning it out. So the format now is just uh, off myself and two or three other people got plant trees over and over. That's kind of low stress um, for everybody. They deliver DPW orders. That's the that's my model. I hope that works for everybody. Um, it's 
a little riskier with a little risky with pruning because you want to really make sure the water is surrounding the trees. This is that's one of the we brought that up made me think about. So this is a tree tree management plan for the city of Chicopee that was done by David Resource Group in 2014. This is the tree bible for the city of Chicopee. So our RFP is going to we are our inventory is going to drive one of these. So uh, it's an extra about 3,200 bucks to have this done. But it's going to give us, uh, for example, uh, young tree training cycle. Number of trees each cycle each year should be at least 205. And it's going to identify where those trees are so we actually know where to go to prune the wow. trees that we've planted based upon what the findings are. So this is kind of an important tool that we're going to have in our toolbox. It's going to basically like summarize the whole inventory. You're going, to, you're going to ask them to also do a tree management plan. That's correct. Uh -huh. That's the yes. last part of the That's RFP. That's the last part of the RFP in the back. Was that always part of it? Yes, it was. Well, I didn't know that. It originally wasn't, but then I actually started to do some. This is, this is new to me, so I'm learning a lot by doing this. this is, I've been reaching out to a lot of different people that have, had, that have done this type of work before. Um, other tree wardens, Molly of the state, Andy from Davy, and uh, it's been an education. But also, it turns out that we can afford it because the price yes. of the risks, you know, so all apparently we can't afford apparently. it. We could also make change orders um, to the contract, so if, and we probably could also do some alternates. So, for example, if we wanted to make, you know, in the base contract, it said we're going to do a thousand million locations, give us an alternate price, please, on another thousand locations. Uh -huh. You know, uh, sort of those. This, for example, you can make this tree management plan alternate, which I'm not planning on doing. But you could do alternate so they could actually they could be bid. So the main body of the inventory is done, and that's the bid price. So let's say it's 40000 And then we have five alternates underneath that we would like to have, and we could prioritize which one we want to pick, depending on how much money we have. Yeah, it will never be cheaper than it is then. That's correct. Yes, because you'll never be able to encapsulate the load of five things. So. Okay. So, so well, actually, when I see cool. a small tree that needs uh, shaping, is that the term? Tree, tree, uh, tree, tree, young tree train. They'll actually mark that down? Yes. That's why I have to change um, our the actual primary and secondary maintenance keys and incorporate that language into the RFP study based on the enhancing tree hundred standards. So it's, it's in there. You know, right now, I don't have it set that way. I'm just asking to look at the can be the branching, the trunk, the flare, basic stuff. Like, like for a level one assessment where you just kind of wander over, we actually drive by the tree, actually, or walk by the tree. So, and then we're going to do a risk assessment as well, which is you know, another really good tool to have. It's going to basically do a risk assessment for each single tree they look at. Oh, really? Yeah. You're adding that? That's not new. That's in there. It's already yeah. in yeah. I didn't see it. So, there'll be a risk assessment. So, the tree in front of the lighthouse, they'll actually. What will they do when they get there? It looks risky. Well, <laughs> well there's a Shack. format. There's, no like, there's like a there's like a well, I'm, I'm just wondering will they four. They, how will they look at the tree? I mean, probably no. Crawl up it. No. no, no, they'll, they'll do it from the ground using uh, binoculars. Binoculars. They use uh, a mallet to sound the tree. Uh, they use a shovel to actually dig around the fire to see if there's any kind of damage in the tree or not. Uh, some people use a uh, small
all your information on the side there. It's, it's a cloud-based program. I've never used it. I've never worked with it, so I'm not familiar with it. But there's a couple different versions out there. But the nice thing about that is that Davy is a huge company. They're not going anywhere. Um, you know, if you have smaller groups of people that have you know half a dozen folks that work and make these software programs, and your company gets expanded, then you don't have any support of any kind. There's no updates, so you're in a lot of you can be in a lot of trouble. But that's down the road. Taking up a lot of time. Lou's having a lot of trouble. Well, Marilyn's not here. That's why I let you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Todd. I appreciate it. So, uh, now I have been to my laxness. I have, there's a couple other, we're going to have a, uh, at least I know one public shade hearing for 86 Massasoit Street. That's the only other item. I don't know exactly when it's going to be. I'm waiting for the uh, resident to come back with their uh, public shade tree hearing request in regards to the mix up that happened where the house was built prior to the driveway car being assigned so the trees were not identified as city trees until the house was built and they decided they needed to get the driveway permit which they did complete backwards. It was a mistake that happened in the uh, the inspector's office that I don't think got kind of remedy. So well you know, that probably will not be posted at least before the next meeting. So I'm go up to Thank you, Mr. Warden. You're welcome. Mr. Vice Chairman. <laughs> Do we have an update on the tree species list? Nothing more has been done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to really plow through the uh, tail end of the agenda. Is that something that we want to include in the RFP at all? I got a species this recommendation? I have, I have not, in the, all the RFPs I've looked at, I have not seen one where they actually request the vendor to make recommendations. But we will be able to say how many locusts are in the public way. All are broken down, so we'll be able to do our own work easily. Mm -hmm. Can you say how many which <coughs> caliber? So from just a process and kind of thinking about the big picture about how we want to continue to work to integrate kind of trees into the permitting landscape, if you will, and then thinking about how we're going to uh, work on the uh, public shade tree protection ordinance, I think the list presents an interesting opportunity for us to kind of test how we can work with the planning staff and the planning board. Um, since it's going to really cross over on their regulatory uh, footprint. Um, so I would definitely encourage us to put some work into that to allow us to kind of move that forward. And I think it's kind of a relatively harmless uh, process. So while it may be a little bit different when we work on the ordinance and get a little bit more into the weeds of uh, the permitting, landscape I think the tree list is something that will provide an easy -er way for us to kind of test the waters on collaboration and working with the planning board and planning department. I think so I think it would actually work well because the planning board has a specific list of trees that they want developers to use in the replanting process and the site plan but yet they're not necessarily type of trees that we may want to see as a, as a tree board or a commission. So I think that's actually really good, good thought. I mean, this kind of reminds me of what just happened here today when we had two folks that came in about the Round Hill issue. So that whole issue started off many years ago, um, but they're a new company that's going to develop all that property and has to go through the, the site plan review presently, and that's why they have to fall underneath this ordinance. If it was old development, it was the original purchaser of Marshall they would have circumvented this um, ordinance. Because they purchased it before That's the correct. ordinance. That's correct. There's no grandfathering clause. So, huh. um, so it actually, so it's interesting though because whatever planning board has uh, presently stated in, in their requirements for tree planting is what exactly will happen in the field of property. So 
so because okay. because if we have an influence there. Okay, so yeah. Yes. Yeah. What, what Todd is alluding to is that yes, they're they're what they have is what they have without any influence from us. Well, so every every parking lot, every subdivision, every site plan, you know, that's an opportunity for this list to be incorporated into the into the into the plans and the permits, not just on the public right of way. But you know, within right. the project itself. So I think, you know, using this as kind of a test case of coordination between some different entities that, you know, will be kind of sticking our nose in their business a little bit. But I think this is a way where we can help, and it should be a relatively harmless exercise where we can kind of learn to work together. And then when we come forward with a tree protection ordinance and then seek to kind of sync the permitting up a little bit more down the road, I think we'll have a good foundation. So it would be important with, with the tree list to um, make a list of trees and then say where we think they would be appropriate to plant them in some sense. So there was, okay, no wire, you know, big open space, choose from this group. Because you're trying to, to prevent people building parking lots from planting Japanese tree life, right? Bush and trees in space the size of this table. Yeah, I, I think so. I think you know, even even just the public shade tree section could have three or four different types. Whether you need a more you know a conical form or something that you know is under wires that can't exceed you know, twenty feet or what have you, and then you know there's might be different trees in you know a parking lot situation or something that's not in the public right away. But I think we should work to identify those categories and categories of spaces. So, Jay, I think the old tree list is pretty good. Is it going to be, going to be a radical shift here? Or it's kind of a I, the change, the biggest change I think I see is that uh, we would add more possibly non-native trees. Non -native trees. Just because they seem to do, do better in harsher situations. You know, also, I haven't figured out I could with a book, but the, the, the latest um, video that we saw about tree diversification in the urban landscape, did you see the video? You know, the, what was part, it was part of the series, the webinar series? Uh, I didn't get that one. Okay. Well, I'm not good at quoting, but given you a bad name, where, but he was kind of giving a radical rethink where he was saying that he wanted to see not just 20, species and are five percent maximum for species but he wanted to see five percent maximum for genus which means that to come up with 20 genuses you really have to like you know and then you really are relying to on ginkgo and other uh, non-native trees that are that i think yeah i think a lot of that is just because it's imported insects that are coming in and they tend to be right he tend just, to be trees Right, exactly. That's what you're saying. That it, it's got to do with the three continents, trees that grow on three continents, have been isolated so that what attacks them is isolated. And then, um, in other words, you have your Asian pests, and your European pests, and your North American pests. They were the pests that transfer from continent to continent. And now, with all global things, trade, motion, uh, you're getting pests from one is typical. For instance, the, the elm pest, it's from a different group of trees, and then it gets to the different continent the pest, and there's no defense. And I think that's true of chestnut blight, uh, Dutch elm disease. And so he's, in this webinar, he was expecting a lot more attacks like that, of uh, species being attacked from other continents. Sure. Um, it's every five years. Okay. Seems to happen every five years. Something grabs onto something. Something new, and so uh, yeah, he was really not optimistic about identifying those species that are essentially just because they're doing well now. He's not saying they're going to do well there. Same like the in there. It seemed pretty challenging, though. He was hoping for five percent per genes. Actually, you know, the other thing. Can I go on about this just a second? This did. That yes. he, he was pointing out that his feeling about the um, overplanting of one species 
was more an economic than an environmental issue. In other words, he didn't seem to mind having them all in a row or all near each other. He was basically saying that if it comes, it's going to get them. You just want to make sure you have a plan so many you can't afford to replace. And so many of any one thing. Uh, so uh, I really think that, you know, if you've got a small street or something and you want all the same trees, you've got, you know, 10, 15 trees, I don't see a problem with that. Right. That's what he was saying. Because what he was saying is that they, 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 from their ecological point of view, if those trees, if we get something from another continent that comes after those trees, having them every only three here and three there, yeah. it's not going to change the situation. But, uh, and, and the real danger was, was really pointed people did elms, the whole town, the whole state country, the whole state was elms, and then they did the same thing with ash trees, and in Norway and Naples, again, and I'm just pointing out that that's, the problem with that is that when they get attacked, it takes decades <coughs> to build back your, yeah, your stuff. I mean, it was a great weapon. <coughs> uh, for some reason, I couldn't get in. Yeah. Oh, couldn't get in. Yeah. Yes. I remember you were going to do it, but I can go back to it. I think it was really, really good. Is there a chance that, um, this, to, I don't know, like break out in half of the meeting, you know, to let people work on it? You know, you know what I mean? I mean, it seems like a, it's not an enormous project, but it's a project. You should know? probably now say the word Google Doc. Right. <laughs> 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 yeah, that requires, that's great, but it's also nice to be able to communicate. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, often, I mean, I was just thinking, okay, if we had half a meeting, you know, if we had certain maybe goals, two or projects or whatever. We, should, that we got to set a date where we're going to get together. Yeah, we need to see a draft first, though. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it wouldn't, I've got the material together. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go through it all. I feel like please, please stop by the we had, you, you try to contact Andrew? I know you were talking about actually getting together with Andrew without me first off. Andrew Smith. Smith. I mean, I think we could, you know, set aside, uh, I don't want to speak for the agenda, I forget if I'm sure next one. You are. Okay. Well, then, here we go. Uh, I, mean, I mean, it might just be able to carve out a chunk of time that the people are here. Well, I think there's really two elements. To, no, I agree. I think there's two elements to it, and we've touched on. One is obviously the species and, you know, bringing in outside or non-native species, mm -hmm. but the other is how is it set up? How are we going to deal with the different environments and the different shapes and the different heights that we're looking at? So it's kind of even the format of it, uh, oh, no, and then how we format. how we kind of fill in. Mm -hmm. Well, so let, let's set aside you know a half hour or whatever at the next meeting. Look at you know let's distribute the format ahead of time and have some space on the board or whatever we need to do to kind of come to some you know seventy five percent design decisions on it. Right. So. Yeah, you can take it off of the Cornell recommendations. Yeah. 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 I've got another one that you asked put out years ago. That's different categories like that, too. Okay. Good idea. Anything else on the list? And just and then moving on uh, and talking to Lily, I just thought we, you know, kind of hold off on the ordinance and regs until she's here. I think that's something she's going to want to be an active participant in. Uh, Marilyn is not with us today. If she were here, she was going to. Be she was going to talk about the uh, I think the tree memorial program, kind of allowing folks to. Yeah. Submit for a memorial tree and then figuring out how we're dealing with recognition. Yep. I can bring you a copy. We're just redoing ours for Smith. Oh, okay. And I have a, <coughs> kind of a paper copy of what ours is. Cool. Any other business?
that's is that a neighborhood group that's kind of yes. pushing that along? Yeah. So I think I mean, maybe at some point we can invite them, them in here and have a more oh, yeah. uh, yeah. Well, well, focused had, meeting. Well, he had told me that the president of Columbia and Gas was actually going to come and talk to them. It was to the neighborhood group? Yes, I don't believe it was at this meeting. It was at another meeting mm -hmm. we were going to have. Wow. Well, I really wanted to go to that one. Yes, I wanted to, but I just can't remember what date it was. So we'll put uh, 30 minutes on for the tree inventory. We'll bring that form, show the format beforehand. Any species information that you have, examples, you can send that around. It does not have to be in Google Doc. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to try to, I'd like to try to send out the, yeah, the RFP, RFP drive so you can all see it. Great. And if you give me your blessing, I'd like to get it. I don't want to wait another two weeks because we're gonna, that's going to be the third week of yeah. June. And I don't want to come around to spread our faces. I've asked them to complete the majority of the six months of the war. And we're all allowed to respond to you directly. That's not a to do. That's yes, correct. A reminder to myself. Get the pie off. <laughs> <laughs> there is a couple um, uh, trees that didn't make it on South Street. And there's uh, one in the cemetery on North Street. And, uh, yeah. And here's, uh, are you going to be able to um, figure out which one's the, the source of which one? The, the, what's the, the, the source? Yeah, like where they B and B, where they, you know, whatever. Uh, what they were, whatever. The only way to do that would be to go to um, the old, uh, the, not the old tree map, but like go to the GIS tree map that we have. It's in there, right? Yeah, it should all it should very much have migrated. Right, it would just be interesting to know what was not successful, I suppose. You know, I know the one, the, I mean, I know the one. It's a sweet gum that was in a, uh, it was in a pot. Yeah, right. man, we had to take, I planted there? that one. No, the one right out here. Well, there was, was there a sweet, the sweet gum died in the cemetery no. too? Oh. No, Because the gone. one, the one. Uh, Carolina Silverbell, I think, is what died in the cemetery. Huh. But that one was on South Street, was in a pot. No, it was in a bad shape. Ah, it wasn't part of what we did. The part of the mitigation that hmm. uh, we had a concession that we had to make the plant trees when we cut down the very tall and maple. Oh. That was at, outside the cemetery on North Street. Hmm. There's a little sidewalk on the side of the cemetery that we have here. I see. Okay, well, it's good to know we didn't plant that one, so I won't even worry about it. But I think the percentage that survived is pretty high, though. Yeah, so far, yeah. yeah. And, and can we just, on that note of throw, the ones that went in last fall, are any of those going to get alligator bags? They, they have. They are. They are. Oh, there are a lot of them. Oh, no, yeah. I don't have. Well, they must have been and, and those yeah. are the air root ones as well. But the ones that went in last fall that don't have that, are they going to get them? If they start to show signs yeah. okay. of trouble, yes, right. the ones that are not leaving off properly or okay or but if they're doing well then they're not yeah. that. Yeah. So I don't need to if they're looking all right don't report it but if I see a sad one I'll yeah but you know this place yeah no a lot of them are doing well I think it will be just rainy yeah. next week well it's supposed to be kind of a damp rainy weekend given the temperature is not going to be like the one last over the weekend when it was yeah that got a little bit well, those are the kind of extremes that I think Andy was talking about, about trying to plant bare root in the spring. It's really yeah. dicey. Yeah. Dicey. dicey. Yeah. Dicey. Yeah. Oh, that's a good recommendation. Yeah. yeah. I, I had the misimpression that spring was when people did you know, bare root. Well, it's yeah. when we do it, but we... Right? Well, much but you're digging your own stuff. Our own stuff. You yeah. dig it the same day and put it... Yeah. Right. It's a much, much bigger it's just huge amount of root. Yeah. Big root, same day. Yeah. Do I hear a motion?
make a motion to adjourn? I think this is fabulous. I adjourn. I put my second to my second motion. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? Uh, I want to. All right. Thank you very much. We're adjourned.